Hi, I'm Apostle Catherine. Welcome to another episode of Revival Is Now. In the last episode, I shared how in this episode, I'd be teaching you the next step of how to fully access the abundant life that Jesus has given you. The first step is hearing the full gospel, receiving it and believing it. So believing that Jesus has paid a price for you to have an inheritance from him, that all he has is yours, that healing, freedom, and abundant life is yours. The next step into accessing this abundant life that's already yours is to walk in authority. Genesis 126, let us make mankind in our image and let them have complete authority over all the earth. The NKJV version says, let them have dominion. In the beginning, God created humanity. He created Adam and Eve. And when he created them, he chose to give them dominion or authority over all of this earth. That means that God didn't create Adam and Eve and humanity to be like robots. God, he's given authority to humanity. He's chosen us to rule over this earth. Now, Adam and Eve lost that authority when they sinned and obeyed the devil. What actually happened was the devil was trying to convince them to give the authority that they had already. The devil did not have authority at that point, but we are given free will. And so there's repercussions with our free will when we use our free will not according to God's will. So that's what Adam and Eve did. They used their free will. And when they did that, they actually handed over authority to the devil. And this is the real reason why we see all these curses were immediately thrown upon humanity. And when immediately our great need for a savior, Jesus, came. It's because Adam and Eve gave the authority they had to the devil. So Jesus, when he came, one of the big things he did on that cross and as he resurrected from the grave was he returned authority authority to God's children. So that authority that God originally intended for humanity to have, it's now ours because of what Jesus did. When you become a child of God, when you give your life to Jesus, you receive this as a part of your inheritance, authority over this earth, over the spiritual realm of darkness. You have authority over demons, over the devil. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the devil. Nothing will harm you. Jesus tells the disciples this after they return from casting out demons for the first time. He tells them, yes, the demons obeyed you because I have given you authority. Now, this is before Jesus went to the cross, but this was prophetic of what he had come to do. This is what we would all receive when we gave our lives to Jesus, part of that inheritance, that we would have authority, just as the original disciples did, over all demonic powers. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. So this is a word to believers, to us today, that we are in a spiritual war. Every single day, there is an unseen war going on in the spiritual realm. Jesus has defeated the devil. When he defeated the devil, the powerful thing he did of defeating the devil was taking that authority from him and giving it to his children, God's children. So the devil does not have authority anymore. That's why we can confidently say he is a loser. He can try to fight all he wants. He can try to attack all he wants, but he is a loser no matter what. He's still fighting though, but the thing that he is fighting for is for you to give him authority, is for you to do what Adam and Eve did. This is why it's so important for you to have this revelation. I have authority in Christ over the devil. The devil doesn't have authority over me. I am the winner through Christ every single day of my life. We are in a spiritual war every day. 
and we can win every single day, but we need to actually show up to battle to see the victory happen. You can't be a champion without being a warrior who laces up their shoes and goes into the race. That's why it says in this passage in Ephesians 6, be strong in the Lord. Don't relax on the couch in life, but be strong. Realize you're in a battle and let's go to work in the spiritual realm. It says put on all God's armor so you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. So the devil has all of these sneaky strategies and all of these strategies, the goal is simple. The devil is the father of lies. So he is lying to you, hoping you will not know this fact I shared with you that you have authority over him. He's lying to you, hoping that you will be too lazy and not use your authority over him. You have to show up to this race. You have to show up to the war and use this supernatural weapons, the the sword of the spirit, put on the supernatural protection, the armor of God to defeat the devil. The devil knows that a lot of Christians are ignorant and do not know what is their right as a child of God. The devil knows that a lot of Christians don't know that healing, freedom, protection, abundant life is theirs and the devil cannot steal it as long as they execute their authority and protect what is theirs. The devil knows it. So this is his strategy to come with these lies, lies of sickness, lies of pain, lies of lack, lies of anxiety, lies of depression. He'll bring them. They can manifest physically these attacks. They can come in your mind. They can come in your dreams. They can come in circumstances. But you need to understand that when you see these attacks, these are weapons formed against you. But the Bible says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. When you start to see these attacks come in your life, know that you have authority to stop these attacks. These attacks do not mean loss in your life. When you get a diagnosis, it does not mean, oh no, the devil won this attack on my life and I have cancer now. You need to understand that these weapons formed against you do not need to prosper. You can stop them from prospering, but you actually have to take action. You have to use your authority to keep these weapons formed against you from prospering. Submit yourselves therefore to God, meaning submit yourself to God's will, take his word seriously and do what it says. Believe that by his stripes you're healed. Believe that abundant life is your inheritance. Believe that you have authority over the devil. And do what the word of God says in order to claim this inheritance and walk in it. It's all over the word of God. Directions on how to do this. The word of God is so valuable. It is not just words, but it literally carries instructions of how to walk in authority, how to see God's abundant life manifest in your life and how to win over the devil every time, how the action of resisting him and rejecting him and seeing him flee. The word of God is like a blueprint to walking in abundant life, but you need to be reading the word of God with true revelation of the Holy Spirit, not in a religious way or not reading it as this is just words, I need to read my Bible, so I'm just reading right through it but reading it with revelation, this kind of revelation, I'm telling you right now, that these are the words that lead to true life. And here's an example, James 4, 7, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So you have to submit yourself to God, number one. And then number two, you need to resist the devil. Resist the devil is an action word. Resist the devil is actually an action word of authority. If you think about teachers, they're in a place of authority. They step into the classroom knowing that they have authority there, that the children don't have authority over them. They walk with that revelation and they execute that authority. Sometimes they need to speak up and they need to speak with a firm voice and 
tell the children to stop misbehaving. A president knows he's in a place of authority. So if there's attacks from other nations, he knows it's his responsibility. He can do something about these attacks. These attacks do not have to prosper. He can go make a law, execute an order, and things really happen. And the country is protected and the enemies are stopped. But the president has to know his place of authority and actually execute his authority. You need to see yourself as a person of authority over the devil. That's part of your identity in Christ. And many Christians are not walking in this revelation. When you don't execute your authority, the devil will just take advantage of it. The devil will just steal it and he'll be the one in charge. Throughout the word of God, there's many examples of how we're supposed to execute this authority. And we're gonna look at some of these. Resist the devil and he will flee from you is one of them. To resist the devil, that's executing your authority. It means the devil is trying to lie to you. The devil is coming with this attack, but he has no authority to win in this attack. You need to resist him though. If you are not resisting the devil, that's the action of accepting him. That's the action of allowing him to come and continue his attack. And this is where we see people who now have yokes in their lives. Weapons were formed against them, but they just let them come at them. They let them prosper. And when you do that, that's the action of opening the door and allowing that weapon to prosper and to just come on inside. And you start to see now the devil's portion over your life in certain areas. And you might wonder why, how did this happen? In, in many cases, it's because you were not executing your authority and you ended up actually just letting the devil take over and having authority over you. So the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. It's really as simple as that. Because you have authority, when you resist him, it's a spiritual law. He's forced to flee. Just like how the police are in a place of authority and they, when those lights go on the siren behind your car, you have to pull over. There's no arguing it. When you resist the devil, as much as the devil will love to, he cannot argue it. He must obey your authority and he has to flee. We really need to see ourselves differently. There's many parts to our identity in Christ. We are children of God. We have a father who takes care of us. Our life is in his hands. But we are also the spiritually mature child of God, yes, but warrior who has authority in Christ. Paul actually calls Timothy a good soldier. Paul also says, fight the good fight. We need to stop seeing ourselves as just mere Christians. When we see ourselves as just mere Christians, churchgoers, just going through the motions of reading the Bible and showing up to church and praying, we end up being like civilian Christians. God said, let them have dominion, not let them just be churchgoers who have no power. So you need to start seeing yourself as this warrior of Christ. And you must stand firm in your place of authority over the devil always. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So this is speaking about how to have authority over the devil in your mind. This is a big way that the devil is coming with the weapons, lying to you, trying to make you forget your authority. So he will lie to you. He can lie to you and say, you should be so afraid. God doesn't really love you. You're far away from God. He can lie to you and say, you're not going to make it. You're going to stay poor. You're going to die. The sickness is not going away. God gives us this direction of how to take authority and have victory over the devil's schemes in your mind. So it says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. So this is this other place where you need to take action. You need to use your authority. You need to be aware in your mind what is not of God. The thoughts running around in your mind, do they align with the word of God? Do they align with God's character and heart? If not, that's the devil. So you need to use your authority and demolish those arguments, those lies. And you need to take them captive, every thought, and make it obedient to Christ. So when I read this passage, it reminds me of 
police. I think about police, how they're taking criminals captive. They have a job and they're taking it seriously and they are protecting lives of people. Let's say someone is driving recklessly, speeding. So they are, they're not going to let that person get away with that. They are going to arrest them and they are going to take that person captive. They are very serious about their job and they have authority to take that person captive. We need to see ourselves like this, like police men and women over our mind. This mind must be a place where God's will remains. It is a sound mind. It must be a mind full of peace and joy and God's thoughts and words only. No other voice is allowed to stay. So you need to be your own policeman or woman in your mind and you need to patrol. You need to be aware. Do not let thoughts just go on and have their way in your mind. When you do that, that is not resisting the devil and that's the action of allowing them to stay. So if you recognize thoughts that are not of God, lies of the devil, lies about who you are, who God is, and God's plan for your life, you need to reject them and take them captive. You need to make it known to the devil that he cannot stay there, that you will not tolerate the lies to remain. So how do you effectively reject every lie and maintain God's will in your mind? Well, you first need to meditate on God's word, read his word. This is where you get to know his voice, where you get to know what his will is, what his heart is. This is how you can discern between the devil's lies and God's voice. In the word of God, you'll learn that God never gives you a spirit of fear, but he actually gives you power, love, and a sound mind. Jesus has provided perfect peace for you. So that means that chaos, stress, fear in your mind, that's not of God. Jesus provided healing for you. So if you have thoughts, I'm sick, I'm gonna get sick, I might inherit this disease, it's in my family line. Sickness is not God's will, those are lies of the devil. God has forgiven your sins and he sees you as the righteousness of God. He never condemns you, it says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So the voice of God is never gonna be shame, judgment, condemnation. These are just some examples, but this is why it's so important you to read the word of God on your own for you to fully know God's voice and his will and be so sharp to be able to discern the devil's lies versus God's truth. So when there's a certain lie of the devil that's going around in your mind, you need to look at the word of God and say, what does the word of God say according to this? So if it's fear, you're feeling so much fear about something specifically. Look to the word of God where it talks about fear. One example is, is that God did not give me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. It also says that those who keep their eyes on Jesus will have perfect peace. Perfect peace is actually part of the inheritance that Jesus provided for you on the cross, meaning it's yours. The devil can't take it. You really have this inheritance of remaining in perfect peace all the time. So as you read the word of God, as you analyze, is this a crime in my mind? You know, yes, it is. You find, yes, this is a crime. This is the devil's lie. You become like a policeman now. Uh-uh, you cannot stay. What you should do is first meditate on the word of God, get that truth in you, in your heart, and then you can speak because there's power. The Bible says the power of life and death is in your tongue when you speak. This is a big way to execute your authority. So you can speak, fear must leave me. You can say it however you want. You can expand on it. It doesn't matter exactly how you say it, but you need to basically say, fear, get out. Fear, you can't stay. Every spirit of fear must go. Every lie of fear must go, however you want to say it. I reject every lie of fear. And so that's you resisting the devil. So he must flee from you. And then begin to speak God's word over your life. Begin to prophesy. This is how you're bringing down God's inheritance of perfect peace. You're, you're bringing it down. You're speaking words of life. You're speaking your authority. You're saying the devil's will can't stay. It must go. God's will must come. So you can speak. God has given me a sound mind. 
I look to you, Jesus, right now. Renew your mind that Jesus is with you always. Visualize that he's looking at you right now. It's the truth. He is. So open your spiritual eyes by activating your faith. Meditate. Jesus is here with me right now. I look in your eyes right now. You don't have to see them in the physical realm. You don't have to have a vision, but you're looking in his eyes in the spiritual realm by putting your faith there that he is looking at you. You receive his eyes of love looking at you, his eyes of peace, perfect peace looking at you. The Bible says, those who keep their focus on me, I will keep in perfect peace. So just close your eyes and just look to Jesus. Just spend some time just focusing on Jesus, talking to him, worshiping him, receiving from him, being in his presence. And now you're accessing that perfect peace. The Bible says you do have to focus on Jesus to be walking in this perfect peace, to be staying in this perfect peace. So make sure you're getting to that place of looking to him, of focusing on him. You will experience the perfect peace of Jesus coming upon you, dwelling in you, replacing in your mind the spirits of fear. This is what we should do in every area of our life, every area that the devil is trying to attack. The way to see the devil lose and to have victory is to walk in your authority, to execute it properly. We are called to have authority over all demonic powers in this world as the body of Christ. So we are all given authority as soon as you give your life to Jesus, but there's different levels of authority and the levels increase as you effectively walk in authority that God's giving you according to his will, that you take it seriously, that you do it according to God's will, that authority God will increase in you. It is the authority that Jesus has given us that makes demons to go. It's because we have authority over them through Christ. This is one of the biggest reasons why we don't see many believers casting out demons today in the body of Christ. It's because they aren't walking in authority at all. They aren't walking in authority over their own spiritual lives. So how could God increase their authority to cast out demons? How could demons even take them seriously when they're not taking authority over their own spiritual life? If you want to cast out demons, if you're praying for that, you have to start here. You need to first be this victorious warrior in your own spiritual life before God can entrust you with more authority to be dealing with higher levels of demonic powers. So now that you know you have authority, it's time to live in this. Every day, renew your mind as you wake up in the morning. I have authority over the devil today, over every strategy that comes my way. I'm gonna execute my authority and the devil must obey as I execute that authority over him. I'm gonna show you right now an example of what walking in authority over the devil looks like. Demons do not stand a chance when we walk in our authority in Christ. Every demon here, your time is up. I declare you to go now in Jesus' name. Out now, now, get out, get out, get out, out. You can't stay. He's mine! He is not yours. Go, go in Jesus' name, out. Stand up, listen to me right now, stand up, stand up. This demon needs to obey. Your time is up and you have to get out of this body. Yes, you have to go, you have to go now in the mighty name of Jesus. You must leave him, you must leave him. You must go now. You must go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Stand up right now. I declare 
no demon can touch you again. Receive this anointing right now in Jesus' name. Receive his anointing to fill you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. God is good. God's healing power is happening today. He frees you guys from every disease, every sickness, every demon. Thank you, Jesus. I declare your spiritual eyes to open up to see who you are in Christ, that you would see yourself as a warrior who has authority over every scheme of the devil. You are victorious over the devil every single day. You are not lazy, but you are strong. You are empowered by the Holy Spirit, and you are a man or woman of true authority in Christ. Demons must obey you in Jesus' name. I speak this anointing to come upon you now and fill you with new levels of anointing and authority. I declare that the devil would see you differently from today, that he would be afraid of you, that he would know he's in trouble because he cannot get away with anything from today. You are executing authority over him and you will have the victory over him every single day from today in Jesus name. I execute the authority that Jesus has given me now over all demonic powers in you and I declare every demonic power holding you back from walking in authority must go. I declare every spirit of religion, every lie of the devil that makes you feel insecurity and weak and not like a good enough Christian. I command all of those lies to go in Jesus name. I declare every spirit messing with your mind and keeping you from reading the word, keeping you from spending time with God and keeping you from focusing when you read God's word. I declare all of those spirits to go in Jesus name. I declare you will read the word of God and you will get revelation from the Holy Spirit. You will hear God's voice. And I declare the fire of the Holy Spirit to fill you now with a hunger for God's word, with a hunger to obey God, with a fire for Jesus and to be in his perfect will in Jesus name. Amen. This was step one training in how to be a warrior of God, how to walk in this authority. In the next episode, you're going to learn the next level of how to walk in authority. This is gonna make you to truly be unstoppable and a true champion in Christ. You are a warrior of God in God's revival army and the devil is in trouble starting now. I'll see you on the next episode. Revival is now. Your glory.